Hello, everybody, and welcome back to BioSC 140, Human Physiology. This video is for Laboratory 4, Thin Layer Chromatography. In the notes, in some places, you might see this called TLC, which stands, which is not just a great singing group, music group from the 90s. It also stands for Thin Layer Chromatography. So TLC, Thin Layer Chromatography. You can read more about this. You can read the background and such in FOX 2.2. There's also good information in the lab supplement, uh, lab four in the lab supplement. So let's get started. A little bit of background information before we get into the procedures of this experiment. Proteins. Proteins are polymers, so a polymer means it's, you've got little tiny building blocks put together. Many little building blocks put together to form a large structure. You can think of it as a bunch of little Legos being put together to form a large Lego structure. The little pieces, the monomers, the little pieces, the Legos, the monomers of amino acids sorry, of proteins are amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Now, in chemistry, we have talked some about proteins already in our lecture. We talked about amino acids. So some of this will be review. When you see something in lecture, it's fair game for lecture exams. When you see something on labs, it's fair game for lab quizzes. If a lot of things, most things in this class, you'll see in both, both places. So it's fair games for lecture exams and laboratory quizzes. So the structure of amino acid is now fair game for both. You should know the structure of amino acid. So there's a central alpha carbon, central alpha carbon, and off of that carbon, you have an amino group, NH2, amino group, you also have a carboxyl group or a carboxylic acid. Now, amino group, carboxylic acid, amino acid, that's where the name comes from. So every amino acid has an alpha carbon. Every amino acid has an amino group. Every amino acid has a carboxylic acid or a carboxyl group. Every amino acid has a little hydrogen off of the alpha carbon. And every amino acid, well, let me take that back. Actually, yeah, every amino acid has something called a side chain or an R group. A side chain or an R group. What makes one amino acid different from another amino acid is the R group or the side chain. There's many different side chains, many different R groups. The R group of each amino acid is what gives it its unique properties. So if you look here, this group at the top are the non-polar amino acids. This group in the middle are the polar amino acids. And this group at the bottom, we have some acidic amino acids. And we also have three basic amino acids. So not only do we have polarity differences between our amino acids, I want you to notice some other differences. I'm gonna give you a few seconds now to look at these amino acids, and I want you to take note of some differences that you see within the R groups. What are some differences that you notice beyond polarity and charge? Size, shape, size and shape. We have some that have rings. We have some that are linear. We have some that are one that's just a hydrogen and really small. We have some that are branched, some that are branched. So there's a number of different uh, characteristics amongst the different R groups. So now with that little bit of background in mind, let's get into the uh, the experiment, how we're going to get the data for this experiment. So what we're going to do with this experiment is we have something, uh, we have something called the TLC plate. The TLC plate, if we saw it in lab, would have a really smooth glass-like side 
like flat, big flat side. And then another side that looks almost like grainy, like kind of like sandpaper, a little bit rough. And on the TLC plate, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line about an inch or so in pencil lightly on one of the sides, on one of the sides. So lightly draw a straight pencil line on the mat mate side, so on the rough side uh, of the plate above uh, where the solvent is. So lightly draw a line about an inch above the end of one plate. We're then gonna mark out six different spots on that line, six different lanes. And on each one of those spots, we're gonna put two microliters of an amino acid. Well, two microliters of an amino acid on each one of these spots along the line. So one drop of alanine right here, one drop of aspartic acid, one drop of histamine, one drop of lysine, one drop of methionine, and then one drop of an unknown amino acid in the sixth lane. We are then going to take that plate and we're gonna put it in a large chamber. This picture doesn't, nest, doesn't really get a good image of what the chamber looks like. This first slide has a better visualization of what it looks like. It's a large chamber. It looks like a thin fish tank. Imagine a fish tank that's only you know, two to three inches uh, in depth, like in, in front to back depth. We're gonna put our thin layer chromatography plate in there with our dots at the bottom, our, our dots of amino acids at the bottom. We are then going to add in a solvent, a solvent. All right, so we have our TLC plate, our thin layer chromatography plate. We're gonna have our line with our six samples of amino acids on it set up. We're also gonna get our fish tank-like container, and we're gonna add a solution that's 50% ethanol, not methanol, sorry, typo, ethanol and 50% water in the bottom. And we're just gonna add a little bit, just a very tiny amount, just enough to cover the very bottom, maybe quarter inch of the plate once we put the plate in. We're then gonna add the plate to the fish tank with the amino acid side down. The water should come up about a quarter inch on the plate and the water should not cover the samples. The water should not go high enough up to touch the samples of amino acids that we put on the plate. We are then, if this was class, we would allow the plate to run, run is just kind of let it do it, let's do its thing, let it process for as long as we possibly could. Usually it lasts around two hours. Um, the longer you let it run, the longer you let it process, the more clear the results are, the better, more accurate the results are. So let's say we let it run for two hours. During those two hours, the solvent is going to move up the plate. The solvent is the liquid we put at the bottom. And when that solvent comes in contact with our amino acid samples, it's actually gonna pull the amino acids up the plate with it. It's gonna pull the amino acids up. This is kind of like if you take a paper towel and you dip that paper towel in water, you'll see the, uh, the water kind of move up the paper towel. The water will move up the paper towel. It's similar to that the ethanol and water solution will move up the plate, just like water will move up a paper towel if you just dip it in water. And as the solution comes in contact with our amino acids, it's going to pull those amino acids up the plate. Once we're done letting this, the run happen, letting it process, we will pull or letting the, once we've decided we've let the solvent move up the plate long enough, we will remove it from the fish tanks, the fish tank-like tank container, and we will spray it with something called, or we will mark 
how far the solvent goes. We will mark how far the solvent goes. So let's say the solvent goes up this far. We'll draw a tiny a light line right here, right where the solvent is at its end. Then, so right here, we'll have the solvent front. This is as far as the solvent moves. We'll draw a line right there. We're then going to take it out of the fish tank, or we already did that to draw the line, and we are going to spray it with something called ninhydrin. Now in lab, this is something that I always do. I do this for the students. I spray the plate with something called ninhydrin. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow us to visualize our samples. It's gonna allow us to see our samples. Up until this point, we couldn't see our amino acids, our amino acid samples, they were clear. They, they, they didn't have a color. The ninhydrin is gonna give our samples a color. We're then gonna put it in, the, in a, like an oven-like device, a warm chamber, and we're gonna incubate it. We're gonna put an incubator and let it, really let it dry. Once the plate is dry, we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna do a few measurements. So we now have a dry plate. We have the line where all of our samples started. We have the line, which is as far as the solvent went. And we have these visualized dots on our plate, which are the samples, which are the amino acids that we put at the bottom of the plate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the distance from the, the bottom line that we drew, the line where we started our samples. And we're gonna measure that to as far as the solvent went. And we're gonna call that measurement DF. DF, the distance of the front, the distance of the front. So how far did the solvent go? The distance of the front. We're then gonna measure how far each sample went. So we know the sample started at this line right here. How far did the sample travel? None of the samples are gonna travel all the way to the front. They're all gonna be somewhere in this middle area. So what's the distance from the start to where the sample is? And we're gonna call that DS, or distance to the spot. Also my initials, great two letters, uh, DS, distance to the spot. And we're gonna have a different distance to the spot for each one of our samples. A unique distance to the spot for each one of our samples. I'm gonna give you a few things to think about before we get into the discussion of this lab. Do you think that every amino acid traveled the same distance? Well, I think I already told you that they didn't. So the amino acids did not travel the same distance. Why was there discrepancies? Why were there differences in how far each amino acid traveled as the solvent moved up the plate. What might affect how far the amino acid moves up the plate? What different characteristics, what characteristics would affect, what amino acid characteristics would affect how far the sample moved up the plate? Sample six, was an unknown amino acid. What do you think we could do to figure out what amino acid the unknown one is? Do you think we can figure out what amino acid the unknown one was? All right, I'm gonna pause the video here and we're gonna come back for discussion in our next video. See you in the next one.